All right, let's get back to it. All right, so good morning, everyone. Quick, quick swig of my energy drink. Um, Team TF. Okay, this is this region right here. Of course, this is a rough draft. This whole document, right? So I'm not like I'm gonna add more and more detail as time goes on, of course. Um, but I'm just where I'm at right now. I'm just laying out. Um, this this whole section is about prestige. Oh, so let me add that then. Um, world class competitions. They had lift, uh, which was ludicrous. Hold on, ludicrously impressive finish. With a finish tricking gathering. Um, I like that. And that'll go right here. And then we do the same thing, we put it in gold, lift. Now, why does it go in gold? Finish. It's because it's um, it's got so much national, you know, it's, it's not, oh, oops. Oh, there we go. Hold on a sec, my cat is like, let me pause real quick. Let me give my cat some love. My, my two cats are fighting, so it's like one of them's kind of sad. The other one, like, just doesn't want anything to do with, like, her sister. So, like, they can't be in the same room anymore. So it's like one's kind of sad lately. But um, so, okay, that's a world-class competition. Let's put that down here. Um, so this is Velu right here, and you know what? We're going to put over here, his name is Alexi. Uh, maybe we'll put it in blue. Yeah, Alexi. Oh, shoot, what's his name? I'm just going to go Alexi for now. He's the winner of Lift Gathering. I was actually, I placed top four at that event. So this whole, this model right here is like, confirmation to validate and to secure history okay um and so alex c became a uh it was a world-class competition i don't think i would consider the the level of performance that we performed at to be world champion grade i would say that it was a um i would say he became a champion grade Mm, for now, let's just give him because I think it was his first victory, but it was actually kind of a high caliber competition. So I think that's appropriate. It was a, it was actually a pretty high caliber competition. So um, it's Velu's event, so I'm gonna give a little bit of status from Velu. Uh, Shose was a judge. Oh, hold on a sec, Alexi. We'll give him like a pseudo, we'll give him a star, a smaller star, because it's not super, he's not like super important, right, compared to like, and then uh, a lighter shade of blue, because it's not as intense. Boom. Um, and then, of course, uh, so... She'll say, and boom, oh, yeah, let's... boom, and that right there was lift, okay, that's this event right here, and um, I placed top four in that, which is why I have, um, so basically just for the nerds, the, the moon is supposed to be like a metaphor for like a mirror, right, to reflect. This is a reflection of status, okay? Um, that's why I have uh, Shosei. There's a connection between myself with Shosei, Zen, and Taichi. Taichi was the third judge. I don't have Taichi on here. Maybe I'll put Taichi on here. But the point is, it was at Velu's event. So this is where Alexi gained. Was it Alexi? Is that his name? Hold on, let me pause and double check. I gotta do justice here. Hold on a sec.
All right, we're back. Alex C. Okay, does that make sense, folks, what I'm doing here? Um, not all competitions are legit. I'm trying to really, the, the priority for me is to really um, get the most legit competitions, especially the victories that are worth the most, in order to justify the most, most important rankings, which is like the top tier triggers, right? So like your Shosei and your Zen, or your like, right now we have Mito, um, we have DYG, Kaige, et cetera right um there's smaller competitions that exist in the world and then there's competitions that are also like kind of iffy in terms of their execution their structure etc there's competitions where the marketing is totally fucked up there's competitions you know like there's various different types of competitions i'm focused mostly on the most legit competitions does that make sense not not impressive displays and definitely nothing that's just scripted or entertainment you know for entertainment purposes i want real battling and i want um prestige you know i want to uh, if i was to go to a competition i want i would this is why i selected this competition was because specifically velu he's a massive name it's a huge honor and a privilege for me to go to finland and to participate at this event and to place that's not the same as going to a lesser competition somewhere in the world and placing lower or or even placing high but amongst low skill level people or people who are known for cheating you know it's like there's less honor in that i would rather go somewhere that's golden i would rather battle somewhere that's prestigious that has a much better name you know it's you know two people who are first place it's like okay now let's compare where were you the first place oh your first place at your friend's competition where your friends are the judges and you battled people 10 years younger than you, that's not as impressive taking a first place victory compared to if you went to somewhere else in the world where there's like years and years and years of developing a school and you enter a competition, you pass the preliminaries and you make it to the finals and you win where the judges are like very high status judges, that's totally different than going somewhere, you know what I mean? So not every competition win is gonna be equal. So what I'm trying to do here is to determine prestige status, like who is number one and why? What are the factors, right? So uh, let's. So we put in um, we put in lift, and oh, they also have. Um, so they they do something here. So I gotta move. <laughs> We're gonna take this off the list. A lot of rough draft, right? Um, a lot of me putting down ideas and improving on those ideas. We're going to put um, along here, it's called Battle Liga. Battle Liga. You know what? It might be just one word like that. Battle Liga. And it's um, Finland's, it's their closed competition, right? So it's just for Finnish trickers. Um, but it's still, it's still similar to like lift level judges, but without the world class, or sorry. Um, it's not lift level judges. It's um it's basically the top judges of Finland who recognize the younger generation. So it would be like uh, the coaches like Alexi, um, Johannes, maybe even Johan. You know you'd have them as coaches. At this event, it was more world class judges, as well as um, international guests. Right. Excuse me. Battle League is more for Finland, so it's a national comp. It's their national event. So I'm going to put that here for now. And they have a few winners. Um, I, I think Morrow is one of them. Let me put some names down before I forget. I got to go through on Instagram and collect the names. I'll do that later when I when I get around to it. So let me just let me just remind myself here. I'll get to that later, but. I'll, I'll input that as well as the, the coaches and their histories because everyone kind of eventually connects, right? There's some people who, um, what's a good example? What's a good example? Um, you 
you know, like Michael Guthrie was judged by Daniel Graham, Anise, and Jeremy back at Trickstar. So he he gets status from them. He was formally given um, second place, but we know that that's kind of bullshit, you know. That right there. And then uh, Steve Torado was also, that was for um, Trickstar, that panel right there. And then Chris Balua Lua also. Oh, I already have, I already have Chris Balua Lua. This is Trickstar right here. Right? So this is how it works. This is how it works. This is how we indicate legitimacy. This is how you go, you pass status from the, the upper generation down to the next generation. And then they pass that status on, so to speak. <clears throat> Now, I've given a connection between myself and Michael to arbitrate, and actually, because, so let me, let me just move it to here, this point right here, and then, uh, and then we'll fix that. Oops. I'll do a lot more of the finer details and stuff later on. I'm just going to get to this for now, kind of lazily. Good enough. Little blemishes here and there. It's not a big deal. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the end of the world. But that's this is uh, this is what I'm trying to do here. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Now, we've got Hadouken, Team GAO. Um, there's an evolution of Team GAO, and they have, I was actually just talking to the guy, because um, I've been thinking about this region, and I wanted to remember more and learn more. So I talked to the gentleman that works at White Tricks Academy, and um, they have a very prominent school. To be honest, we're only starting to see big, like names, so to speak, um, come from that region. Um, I hesitate to say that like they're fully fledged and fully um, initiated. Like yes. Um, I would say that they're super legit, but I need to see like like impact on the sport, so to speak. Um, I hope I'm not coming across rude. I'm really not trying to be. I like there there a school. The I was told that it was 2018 is when White Tricks came out, but of course it is an evolution of Team GAO. One of the members that lived with Team GAO went on to create White Tricks, and. Um, I, I feel like their school is valuable, but we have to see why. You know, so far they're they're on they're building. You know, they're they're building their foundation. They're building their identity. 
but they don't quite ha like you know there's i'm not trying to be rude but i feel like there's still something more for them to really be considered prestigious you know but they are a school that stands on their own um they recognize the history of the sport they know their place in the his in 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 where things are um they appreciate the history they're not trying to scam they they respect the sport and they respect um their region and even they recognize that k slash you know because i was having a conversation about this topic with the gentleman the owner uh behind white white tricks and he was telling me that he agrees with what i'm saying um about k slash likely having the highest status due to him having seniority positive contribution upholding the truth um you know and also raising the next generation being a great coach killing it out there in scotland and he's and k slash stands on his own you know he's he came from team tf he um you know he doesn't you don't need like a ktl to prop them up you don't need like a, a bay area hustle team you don't need any like complementary organizations they those organizations are below ktl or sorry they're below hadouken right they th these organizations would benefit if they went to they went up and partnered with ktf with k slash excuse me you know what do you get what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say some organizations are small so they feed off something bigger other organizations are massive and they stand on their own you don't need to partner with something you can just host your own whatever and that is that's enough weight for example when i hosted battle oasis I didn't ask for I didn't ask for any endorsements, but a massive endorsement eventually came unexpectedly out of the blue. And so I'm grateful to have guest judges and stuff like that. But that wasn't my thing. My whole thing was how can I build myself, whereas my competition, Toronto Tricking, turned to KTL immediately, turned to the US Tricking Tour immediately and sold out and sold all Toronto culture, all Toronto ideas and started to just give and give all of these things away in exchange for the, the benefits, for the support, for the, you know, for the advertising, et cetera. You know, it's called selling out. What I'm looking for are organizations that are not gonna sell out. You know, there's that's what makes something prestigious is that it, can, it stands on its own. It doesn't need, it doesn't like, it's one thing to partner with and affiliate on equal terms, but it's another thing to really allow another organization to take to corrupt your values and to corrupt your brand and to take over your work. And you need that people are going to defend their own, their, their baby, so to speak. It's like when you create a brand, it's like your baby. Are you going to just sell out immediately? You know, there's some people, if you're a builder, people who build they're not just going to sell out super quick because you're going to love the thing that you built. It's like you've been building something. Why would you, you know, like be so quick to part with it? For some people, it's about survival. I'm not in tricking for survival. It's not my career. This is something that I do because I love to do it, that I'm I voluntarily am willing to do it. That's a huge difference between people who look at tricking as a vehicle for making money or for popular. They're looking at it for such superficial reasons. I'm into it for the lore, for the, the depth, for the, for the philosophical understanding, for what makes tricking so beautiful. I fall in love with the sport. For other people, they just, they've lost that magic and they don't have that anymore. And they're, they're so like corrupted, their values are so corrupted. They're not who they were when they first started, the, when they first started their journey. You know, I'm still on my journey, you know? I'm, I'm still day one energy, still in love with the sport, still seeing it as a hobby but I'm evolving. I'm continuing to evolve as time goes on, whereas other people are still living. They're trapped in the year 2013, trapped in the year 2008, whatever. I'm May 23rd, 2024, evolved my understanding. I'm still at the very edge of what it means to be a tricker. Modern day, fully updated. There's no, I'm not stuck in any other year. I'm forging the future. Other people are, they're so completely off, off course that they, won't even understand what I'm talking about. So I'm looking for people who are who are also up to date, but yet they respect and they maintain continuity of the story. And people who fit into the story without trying to skew it and corrupt it for their financial or or fame or whatever it is, whatever purpose that people are trying to 
you know, skew things for. And so there are brands that are more prestigious because they uphold, they fortify, they provide that, that strength of what it truly means to be a tricker and they, they bring glory to their country. So that's, that's where prestige comes from. That's where honor comes from as a battler. And that's what I'm trying to instill here. That's what I'm trying. This is the, this is what, a, what it means to have a, a legit ranking system. So there's a, a degree, there's a range. It's not set in, you know, it's like there's a, a spectrum. There's, there's positive and negative, and there's also flux because as time goes on, things change. People make different decisions. Something that was once golden can turn to dust. Something that was once dust can be reborn into, you know, something glorious. Time changes things, right? People's decisions alter and affect things. So what I'm looking for is as time goes on, are people becoming more positive or are be people becoming more negative? If you want to add prestige, you got to be legit. And that's not to say like there's there's organizations that are nationalistic and then there's non-nationalistic organizations. Just because you're non-nationalistic doesn't mean that it's not positive, but it just so happens that usually organizations that are non-nationalistic, they're usually in it for the money and the fame. They'll tell you that it's about friendship. They'll say that it's culture over clout, but that's not really true when you look at their actions. Actions, marketing and presentation has to match your actions. And if there's, if, if you're caught lying, scheming, stealing, you know, defrauding, there's no honor, there's no glory amongst thieves. You know, you, and the sport of tricking is about developing your own identity, your own original identity and, 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 and honoring the truth. If you're a judge, you have to appoint the true winner. You have to keep the story straight. This is super common sense. But for people who don't care, who know that they can just take advantage of an audience that doesn't know better, they'll fuck around with it just because they can. They have the power to do so, so they'll fuck with people. If a truly a good school isn't going to fuck with people. They're not going to fuck with the next generation and lie to them and get away with it just because they can make more money or whatever. That's called taking advantage. It's called exploitation. I'm looking for schools. I'm looking for brands that are not going to exploit the communities that they that they're involved in some will definitely exploit you they'll lie to you to your face they don't give a shit about you they just want your money and you'll fall in love with them with their lies with ideas that don't even belong to them that they take from other people that's not honorable there's nothing honorable about that we want people in my opinion prestige comes from people who forge their own identity they forge their own culture and they they carry that culture through to the next generation and they make the next generation better and that they maintain continuity of the sport. So I'm going to go, I'm going to continue. I'm going to end it now, but I'm going to go through and add more legit organizations that give a shit that actually care about you and that care about the sport and that they honor the sport. They have that thing called honor. They're not just sellouts. They have that thing called honor. And that's what I'm looking for. That's what matters most when we're talking about status, you know, and people make mistakes. There's no, there's no such thing as a perfect tricker. You have me, you can count on me if there's any event ever where there's footage, especially, but let's be honest events that, that don't film and don't post and they go underground. It's like, why, why would you, why would you bury the footage? How come you don't want to post your stuff? Honor is about publicly advertising. Hey, we're having this event. Everyone is welcome on these dates, at this location, at this time, it's open preliminaries, anyone can join, you know, that's honor, it's anyone can film. And it's like the more open you are, the more transparent you are about the process shows that you believe in your product, that you believe in your gathering, you believe in your event, when it's all closed, scripted, yo, we got to hide this, make sure this person doesn't come to the event. No, 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 don't film that don't film that we can't let David find this, you know, people only do that stuff when they're sketchy as hell, when they're probably doing things that they're not supposed to. So you know that events, and this is why the events that I've gone to, whether it's TBJ, World of Tricking, whatever, do you think they give a shit about? No, it's open preliminaries. Anyone can join. It, they're super cooperative, transparent. You can, you can send them a message and say, hey, how do, you, how do you do this? How do you do that? How are you structuring your event? And they'll say, oh, this is how we seed our competition, blah, blah, blah. They're open. I'm talking, 
I've talked to various organizations who are very, very open about their process. And that's a, that's such a good thing. You know, I've had other organizations that have screwed me over personally right before a competition, turn around, lie to the public. The same people that are giving them money for the event, for tickets, they'll turn around and lie to them straight to their face to, ma to mask and to hide the truth of who they truly are. Because deep down in their soul, they know that what they did was wrong. But they, that's why they know not to show it to other people. But you don't want to work with those types of people because they're just going to scam you. You want to work with people who they have fair rules, they uphold those rules, and they make sure that the winner, the true winner of a competition should be declared and that they have judges that they can trust aren't going to pull any funny business. Even if the judges have a relationship to maybe some of the competitors, that they're not going to be biased towards those competitors, that they're going to do a genuine good job. And at the, at the very least, you know, that if David gets his hands on the footage, he will call bullshit if he sees it. So there is a layer of protection. That is what my brand, Utopia Tricking, does offer. It's 100% free. This isn't a business. I'm doing this to make sure that we can, that things improve as time goes on and that people aren't just gonna exploit because they can and, and have and will continue to do so. Probably they'll go underground where they belong. They'll go into the shadows. They'll go back into the darkness. They'll hide the footage change their marketing, you know, pretend like this never happened. They'll go, they'll go back into the darkness where they belong. But in the light, it's in the light where people deserve to shine. The true champions deserve to shine. Where, the, where glory exists is in the broad daylight of public. You know, you can go out there, you can proudly put it in your bio. I am the champion of my country. I am ranked number one in the world. I am the winner of this event. People can proudly advertise it and it means something. Those words truly have meaning because they earned it legitimately fair and square. Other people can't do that because they know that if they post their resume, someone like me will take one look and I'll eat that. I'll chew it up. I'll spit it out and I'll call bullshit if it is bullshit. Or I'll take a look at their resume and I'll say, damn, you, sir, are ranked number one because that's your resume. Those were the judges at that event at that time by that legit organization that makes you who you are, where you truly are. That's what a ranking system is supposed to do. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm building. So it's my experiences that gave me insight and understanding. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, continue to build, continue to grow. And I'm fortunate because the videographers and other people are helping me with that. So thank you to the videographers and thank you to organizations for, for cooperating and for being open and honest and transparent about the process. So when it comes to England, when it comes to the UK, I also got to put UTX, UTX over here. But my, my knowledge is a little bit limited. So I've been asking people, uh, historians, and I have to see the, the family tree, so to speak, the evolution, uh, the relationship, okay? Because this is a direct evolution. K slash is not... He, he went from Team TF, and then as years went on, boom, he, he produced this. Congratulations, K Slash. You should be very proud of yourself. I'm sure he is. He's killing it. Team GAO, uh, I should say maybe informally, maybe informally, because the guy wasn't a full-fledged member of Team GAO, but he was like living with them or whatever. He, he kind of fed off of them a little bit, maybe. He went on to create White Tricks. White Tricks is still in the process of proving itself. It's on the map so to speak. They, these guys have a relationship, by the way. But let me let me quickly draw that because there is a relationship there. Um, maybe like that. We'll see. But this, but this, okay. Does this make sense what I'm doing here, folks? I think it does. And I'm going to continue to add more legit organizations. We're going to go through the countries, and I'm going to show my process, and I'm going to I'm going to ramble and and talk more about that kind of stuff and why why do I think this way? Why am I doing what I do for the future generations, and to to give recognition to people from the past? So I'm going to head out now. I'm going to exercise. It's time to train. If you're along this journey, I appreciate you. Anyways, take care.